William Byrd on the Native American Religion, from The History of the Dividing Line. In the evening, we examined our friend Bearskin concerning the religion of his country, and he explained it to us without any of that reserve to which his nation is subject. He told us he believed that there is one supreme God, who has several subalternate deities under him, and that this master God made the world a long time ago, that he told the sun, the moon, and stars their business in the beginning, which they, with good looking after, have faithfully performed ever since, that the same power that made all things at first has taken care to keep them in the same method and motion ever since. He believed that God had formed many worlds before he formed this, but that those worlds either grew old and ruinous, or were destroyed for the dishonesty of the inhabitants, that God is very just and very good, ever well pleased with those men who possess those godlike qualities, that he takes good people into his safe protection, makes them very rich, fills their bellies plentifully, preserves them from sickness, and from being surprised or overcome by their enemies. But all such as tell lies and cheat those they have dealings with, he never fails to punish with sickness, poverty, and hunger, and after all that, suffers them to be knocked on the head and scalped by those that fight against them. He believed that after death, both good and bad people are conducted by a strong guard into a great road, in which departed souls travel together for some time, till at a certain distance the road forks into two paths, the one extremely level, and the other stony and mountainous. Here the good are parted from the bad by a flash of lightning, the first being hurled around to the right, the other to the left. The right-handed road leads to a charming warm country, where the spring is everlasting and every month is May, and as the year is always in its youth, so are the people, and particularly the women are bright as stars and never scold, that in this happy climate there are deer, turkeys, elks, and buffaloes innumerable, plentiful, fat, and gentle, while the trees are loaded with delicious fruit, quite throughout the four seasons, that the soil brings forth corn spontaneously without the curse of labor, and so very wholesome that none who have had happiness to eat of it are ever sick, grow old, or die. Near the entrance to this beloved land sits a venerable old man on a mat richly woven, who examines strictly all that are brought before him. And if they have behaved well, the guards are ordered to open the crystal gate and let them enter into the land of delight. The left-handed path is very rugged and uneven, leading into a dark and barren country where it is always winter. The ground is the whole year round covered with snow, and nothing is to be seen upon the trees but icicles. All the people are hungry, yet not a morsel of anything to eat except a bitter kind of potato that gives them the dry grips, and fills their whole body with loathsome ulcers that stick and are insolubly painful. Here all the women are old and ugly, having claws like a panther, with which they fly upon the men that slight their passion, for it seems these haggard old furies are intolerably fond and expect a vast deal of cherishing. They talk much and exceedingly shrill, giving exquisite pain to the drum of the ear, which in that place of the torment is so tender that every sharp note wounds it to be quick. At the end of this path sits a dreadful old woman on a monstrous toadstool whose head is covered with rattlesnakes instead of tresses, which drive a terror unspeakable into all that behold her. This hag pronounces sentence of woe upon all the miserable wrenches that hold up their hands at her tribunal. After this they are delivered over to huge turkey buzzards like harpies that fly away with them to the place above mentioned. Here, after they have been tormented a certain number of years, According to their several degrees of guilt, they are again driven back into this world to try if they will mend their manners and merit a place the next time in the regions of bliss. This was the substance of Bearskin's religion, and was 
as much to the purpose as could be expected from a mere state of nature, without one glimpse of revelation or philosophy. It contained, however, the three great articles of natural religion, the belief of a god, the moral distinction between good and evil, and the expectations of reward and punishments in another world.